Welcome to my Sunit. Today we will learn about affinity chromatography. So in the last video lecture we have learned about the basics of chromatography. You can check in the description box I will put the link. So what is affinity chromatography? It's a technique, it's a chromatography technique that actually enables the purification of a biomolecule with respect to biological function or individual chemical structure. Okay. Now what is the basis? The basis of reversible interaction. So Actually, this affinity chromatography separates proteins on the basis of reversible interaction between target and a specific ligand. Okay, let's say if the ligand is enzyme, then its its target will be surely will be some substrate, substrate analog or inhibitor or cofactor. Okay, if if the ligand will be uh, if the ligand is antibody the target molecule will be antigen if the ligand will be abidine the target will be biotin etc etc now here i have drawn a, a picture uh, i will tell you later what what is this diagram or why i have drawn this okay so firstly you have to remember that that it separates the protein on the basis of reversible interaction like enzyme uh, uh, enzyme substrate or antigen antibody okay or lectin polysaccharide or maybe nucleic acid and some base sequence complementary base sequence okay some poly a tail with rna containing poly u sequence right a with u adenine and uracil or maybe glutathione glutathione is, uh, with that that is called glutathione and the each target will be glutathione s, s transferase etc etc okay so again i am telling that that substrates that will be purified will specifically or irreversibly adsorbed by the ligand let's say your ligand is enzyme uh, let's say your ligand is antibody here i have drawn some antibody i will tell the i will tell you later about the diagram then the antigen will bind to this to its uh, antibody part that means your ligand part bind or adsorb uh, that is uh, specifically or reversibly right and then you have to wash it away actually what happens uh, samples will be applied under favorable conditions for the specific binding to the ligand okay now now the now there will be so many uh, many unbound substances also and those will be washed away right then again at the elution part there will be some competitive ligand or maybe by enabling suitable ph or ionic strength or polarity we can have the molecule of interest at the end right so let's come to the drawing what i have drawn here here you can see this is the column and this is at the matrix or ligand okay not ligand uh, this is normal now antibody is somehow attached to the matrix right so antibody will do what it will bind to only antigen now specific antibody will bind to specific antigen so here we will load the sample right so there will be many antigens let's say the blue one will attach to the these antibodies okay now in this space you can see there are so many proteins and your protein of interest or molecule of interest will attach to its ligand so in the next step what you will do we will wash so after washing the binded things or the bound things will be there now we can collect the uninterested parts uninterested proteins or molecules correct so it is washed away now remember now in this column we only have our protein of interest which is bound to its ligand but you have to take it you have to separate it right here comes the elution part Illusion can be uh, illusion can be achieved in what way? As I have said, maybe it's changing the pH or adding salt. Adding salt will uh, will be will help in destabilizing this bind, this bond, right? So what happens? This will be unbound from its ligand, and now we can collect our 
protein of interest. Similarly, if there is something, another type of apneic chromatography, you can add some counter molecule which can which have the same affinity for that ligand and the new molecule will attach to the ligand and the protein of interest will be washed, not washed out actually diluted and you can have your protein of interest or that molecule right so this is the sole idea of affinity chromatography now we'll talk about a special type of affinity chromatography that is immobilized metal ion uh, sorry the spelling is wrong i know it's correct immobilized metal and affinity chromatography okay so what happens here the main idea is nickel ion nickel 2 plus has an affinity with his tag proteins his means his studying so here you can guessed you here you can guess that if nickel has an affinity with histac protein then you can use his uh, nickel with your bead that is the bead let's say that it is bead uh, here you can say that this was the example of enzyme i mean uh, antibody antigen interaction affinity chromatography it's type of that here i have used antibody as the ligand with the bead so here with the bead it is here is used agarose bead let's agarose bead here you can use nickel with it with it right so in the process what will happen let's say if it's agarose bead this is the nickel then only the histidine tag proteins that will bind to it sorry This tag protein will be have, will be have, will have affinity. I mean, it will bind to the nickel part, right? Now in IMAC, unlike of the antigen antibody that is salt salt uh, salt concentration is in, uh, increased to elute your protein of interest. Here, counter ligand is used. So what will do the counter ligand? The counter ligand will bind to the nickel and then you can have your histidine tag protein that is your protein of interest right so why so what is the counter ligand in uh, nickel uh, immobilized uh, i mean imac so here the counter ligand is imidazole so why imidazole so actually imidazole the histidine actually possesses the imidazole structure let's check the histidine structure this is histidine okay and now nickel will bind to this part so here this is histidine and some other parts will be there and it will be histac protein it's so many parts and nickel 2 plus will bind to its this end part this is histidine okay now what is imidazole it looks like the same so this is imidazole okay now when you have washed out the other things like here washed out the unnecessary things so you will have the nickel binded uh, beads and uh, here the nickel binded beads and with the histac proteins right and now you are using some counter ligand here you are using the counter ligand is imidazole now what is happening the nickel is binding to the imidazole and it's releasing the proteins and that is our protein of interest so here you can we can elude the histac proteins by IMAC right so let's, reca so let's recap it once again uh, so what is affinity chromatography it actually separates the proteins on the basis of reversible interaction between target and 
target protein has specific ligand attached right so what happens here you will have a bead and you have to attach some ligand with it and that ligand will bind your protein of interest then you have to wash it the un unnecessary things will be washed out and for illusion you can use some salt you can change the ph or you can change some polarity or you can have some counter ligand for example in antibody and antigen interaction we have increased the salt concentration and for the illusion uh, then we can have our proteinometer is for example uh, and for imac here you can see that nickel 2 plus has an affinity with histac proteins so histac proteins will bind to nickel 2 plus and then for the illusion we will use some counter ligand that is imidazole imidazole here is the counter ligand and imidazole will bind to the nickel 2 plus and you can have your proteinometer which is histac at the end right so this is the affinity chromatography hope you have understood what is affinity chromatography thank you